Hey everyone, so we are here today and we are telling part two of the untold story of the pharmacy. And if you guys tuned in last week, you saw how we ended at, we made it the infamous U-turn to come back to this yard sale that we found at a barn as we were headed to the farmer's market. And as we made the U-turn, uh, this is actually where we ended up and this is kind of where everything changed for us and where the pharmacy got its start. So. Um, I'm just gonna walk you guys through everything that happened that day and then kind of some of the stuff that we did on the farm and you guys will get to meet some of the people that helped make all this happen too. So if you come this way, um, first of all, whenever we pulled in, we pulled in and parked, I think actually somewhere over here and there was a whole bunch of um, stuff like all in this area with this yard sale and um, you know, a bunch of stuff that really honestly we we didn't need because oh watch out you're gonna get hit by a power wheels <laughs> um you guys gotta you gotta show them that this is so <laughs> kids on a first first day go again. Again. again 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 buddy again that's so much fun you guys are having fun <laughs> so um there was this uh all this stuff here and um my husband and i were actually on a tight budget so we had no business buying anything from a yard sale at that point but uh, we did find this white farm table that we ended up buying for 15 bucks and it was super cute we took that home um but meanwhile we got to kind of looking around and robbie my husband who's doing the video right now he got to talking to another guy who was here running the yard sale who turned out to be uncle roger who was the uncle of um the people who lived here on property and so he was off talking to him and i noticed back in the back here so if you look over here so here's the barn i noticed back in the back that they had um like some goats i heard the baby goats like bleeding out in the back but it's uh bleating that's how they like bah or whatever <laughs> not bleeding uh, but anyway so the, i saw baby goats back there i saw that they had produce and i was like oh my gosh i've got to go see these new baby goats so um we can actually walk down this way and i'll just show you guys kind of where we were don't mind the craziness my little kid is in having the ride of his life right now with a two-year-old driver um anyways so um down here i just kind of walked down and ended up meeting Peggy who um, Peggy and her husband Roger actually live here on this farm and they uh, were farming full-time and this farm is uh, roughly like 10 acres or so they had like chickens they had produce they had goats uh, donkey some cows um, so if you we don't have to walk all the way down there but if you just look this way right here on the to the right side um, is right where we were looking and tending to the goats. So they had a bunch of brand new baby goats. So I kind of stood there, started a conversation with Peggy about the adorable baby goats. And then, um, you know, just real cash. And I was like, man, this is just the best thing ever. Like this is exactly the type of farm that I could imagine Robbie and I having. Um, because we, since I had started my health journey, actually talked about having our own little gentleman's farm of like, you know, 10 acres or so, or we'd have like produce and a few animals and stuff. Um, and we wanted to actually call that farm the pharmacy. So whenever I saw this, I was so inspired. I was like, this could be us in like 20 years, babe. So um, anyway, I walked back up to the front and um, Robbie had been talking to their uncle Roger and he got his business card and then we left. So I'm gonna introduce you guys really quick whenever we get back up here to Peggy and Roger who are actually still here on this farm. Um, and they're gonna tell you guys a little bit about like what happened and how we got connected with them just from meeting at this yard sale. So it's pretty cool. And there's still actually a farm that we source from to this day, friends of ours and they're some of the nicest people you'll ever meet so peggy and roger come <laughs> um and it's a little bit chilly so don't mind me if my eyes are watering but so uh -huh. this is peggy and roger everyone they are i would say like 99 percent responsible for having the pharmacy having got its start which is so awesome so i really appreciate you guys having let us do all that we're doing and even being here today it's crazy that we're here four years later yeah. i know yeah. and like all the stuff that's happened so i wanted you guys to tell like what what you remember about 
I don't know. Like, it's, like to me, it was such an impactful day, the yard sale, the thing that happened. But, you know, you guys were just there. This is your house. It wasn't a big deal. So what do you guys remember? Well, I just remember you guys were excited about wanting to maybe try your hand at farming. Right. And uh, we were like, yeah, I mean, you know, we were busy that day and said, we'll yeah. try in a few days. So this is, I didn't, I didn't get to that part yet. So we ended up... Um, leaving the yard sale after I talked with Peggy just about the goats or whatever. I was like, no big deal. On our way home, Robbie was like, oh, you should get in contact with them and see if they'll let you just come, you know, like work at the farm or whatever, just to see if you like it. So that's when we wound up back here. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you guys were just kind of like, a little skeptical. <laughs> we, were, we were surprised. Yeah. Like, yeah. you want to do what? No. I know, because I showed up and I was like, yeah, we, well, we wanted to have our own little farm one day. And so um, I'd like to come, you know, help out for free. And how do you feel about that? And I'm sure, like, you guys are probably nervous about having this scrawny 20 something year old girl come try to help you out at the farm because it's not like, it's it's not easy. Right. It's you know? dirty and it's. I just yeah. remember when we had to clean out the duck pen. And that, you, yes. you actually got in there and helped. That was literally, that's one of my favorite memories. So we'll walk and show you guys um, the, where the duck pen was, which we helped kind of clean out. Or I, <laughs> that was like some of the most backbreaking and dirty work I've ever, that's a dirty job. It's horrible. <laughs> that was horrible. really, really, really tough. So. Um, so you say you couldn't get the smell off your hands. So you li no, literally. I mean, it was, I wore gloves and everything. And it was days that my hands smelled like duck poop after that. So well, long story short, after um, meeting and talking with Peggy and Roger, they let me come back to my surprise and happiness. They let me come back and help them. So um, it was months and even like maybe i don't really know exactly how long it was but i mean it was from like november for sure till like the middle of summer that i kept working and then even then i would come back and pick produce for once we started the farmers market so it was quite a while that i was here until we just got too busy i couldn't do it anymore but um they helped show me the ropes of everything that is farm related and that's why i have such an appreciation for our farmers now because i know how hard they work and how hard um their job is because it is not easy at all so I fully uh, well not fully but I to some degree understand like what farmers do and how how much you guys have to sacrifice to bring food to people so really appreciate all that you guys do and for letting us get our start here so uh, basically you can see we have this really fun barn here which is a really nice shelter whenever it's cold or really hot and um, just kind of like a fond memory of always coming here with the barn kitties and stuff. But if you come over on this side, um, this is just a small, oh, there you are. This is <laughs> just a small portion of um, produce that they have now. We do still get produce from Peggy and Roger, um, but back then they had even way more that they had available that they were growing on that was all on this back area. So we can keep walking back this way. So I would actually come here to the farm early in the morning and this was mostly between like I said like November through I don't know maybe like May or June and um, we come to like pull weeds I would harvest orders um, Peggy and Roger mainly at that point did um, farm to table with like upscale restaurants through a distributor um, or a few different distributors so we would like harvest different orders we'd harvest um, like onions and lettuce and uh, spinach or whatever whatever they had growing that the restaurants were buying that is what we would pick the orders um, I would help them feed their animals like their chickens which you can see over here they have some um, different chickens and birds and all different kinds of things that they um, are raising animal with and back in the back they have ducks and you can see um, that's one duck pen. The duck pen that I helped clean out was actually the one that's on the right with the little like top over it. Um, so I would help them, you know, shovel duck poop and feed goats and all that kind of fun stuff. So that's kind of where I fell in love with farming, but also um, where I really understood how hard it is to farm because whenever you're coming out here and like today, it's just a little bit chilly, but um, I mean, whenever you're out here and it's 30 something degrees and you have to go um, get your hands wet and pick produce and 
do all this work and weed and no matter what the weather is, it is miserable whenever you're cold because I would rather sit in the heat and sweat any day. But woo, like right now it's freezing. Um, so not really, I'm a Florida girl. It's not really freezing, but it is pretty chilly. Um, but then, you know, they would have like losses. So you can see like their ducks are out. And so predators can get in there and you'd come, I'd come here and then find out that, you know, five or 10 ducks were killed overnight or some of the chickens, a raccoon got in and got some or um, a baby goat died for some reason or whatever. So there was lots of loss and lots of sad things that would happen on the farm. But then there was also lots of really like, really joyful and abundant things like whenever they'd have new baby goats that were born or a new shipment of like little baby chicks were so cute um or whenever you're picking produce and like seeing the like literal fruits of the labor that you put in like where you know this was something that you planted by seed and then now you're harvesting it and somebody's going to go eat it and enjoy it um so this is basically where it all started and so how we ended up moving from me being a farmhand and maybe we could go move inside the barn. It's so cold. I think I'd be a little bit happier inside. I'm not like shaking, literally. Um, so what happened was I've been doing this for like several months and it was at this point like mid-February or so. Um, so I'd been doing it for maybe four months or something like that, helping out at the farm. Um, and around like mid-February, we had really abundant like leafy greens and kale because in Florida, that's whenever um, it's like cool enough for those to grow and like be really thriving. Um, so we had been tending to this kale, which by the way, because we, we used to go to the farmer's market every Saturday before I started working at the farm. But then once I um, started working here, we were able to eat the produce and it was like, we didn't really even have to go to the farmer's market anymore because I had all this fresh produce that was here. And um, so the um, all the produce that I've been tending to it included this really big, beautiful row of curly kale. I had been weeding it, I had been picking it, and then um, Peggy and Roger told me that they had decided that they were gonna actually till over that row of kale um, because it hadn't really been selling at restaurants. I was pretty much the only one enjoying it. <laughs> and so it was like my favorite vegetable at the time, my beloved row of kale. And I was like, please, like, like I couldn't stand to see it go to waste. So um, I basically said, just let me know before you're gonna till it over because I'll figure out something to do with this kale. I'm actually gonna, can we, let's head on in here. I'm freezing. So I'll tell the rest of the story once we get inside. <sighs> have a little relief from the cold. I'm such a wimp when it comes to cold weather. Okay, so anyway, I um, headed home after Peggy and Roger told us that they were gonna have to be harvesting that beautiful row of kale that you guys just saw, or not harvesting, that they're gonna be tilling it over, which basically means that it's gonna be going back into the dirt um, to kind of prepare for the next crop. And it's not that they didn't wanna do something with it, it's just there, there's no time to worry about it or to do something with it. Um, when you're so busy doing everything else, the last thing you're worrying about is some kale that nobody's buying. <laughs> I was worried about it. So um, whenever I went home, my husband Robbie had gotten off work early because he had like some eye pain. And so um, he ended up like having eye pain all night long, even into the next morning. And then we were like a little bit concerned, like what's wrong? Like he's never, he doesn't wear glasses. He doesn't wear contacts, never even been to the eye doctor. So we were like, okay, maybe we should go to the eye doctor and get yourself checked out. So um, we made an appointment. We, we showed up at the eye doctor appointment there. And whenever we were there, the like intake nurse or whatever, who does like the initial exam, he was there and um, his name was Kyle. He took Robbie back. He was doing the initial exam. And um, we just chatted for a few minutes and Kyle was like, oh, what, what church do you guys go to? I was like, oh, well that's pretty presumptuous of him. Like, you know, not that I was like offended or anything, but I was like, that's, a, that's kind of a, you know, uh, I guess presumptuous question to ask, like how does he know we go to church? But I mean, we are we are Christians, we do go to church. And um, so we, we told him that we went to Glad Tidings Church at that time and whatever. And then basically um, he said, and this, let me just preface this first of all and let you guys know, like um, 
I'm highly skeptical of overly spiritual things. Like, I'm a Christian, I go to church, I believe in the Bible, and but I like really lean more towards doctrines and not so much experience and like I really want to make sure that things are like legit so I'm super skeptical when it comes to overly spiritual things but anyway this this Kyle guy right here in the middle of this exam room says that um, you know as soon as he saw Robbie and I he saw like something on our marriage like a light uh, like around us and that um, he felt like God was telling him to tell us that we had been um, planting seeds and that we were about to reap a harvest where we've been sowing seeds and um, to not give up that God was going to use us in our marriage to do something that was going to bless other people and like he just kind of went off <laughs> on this tangent of what felt like a direct word from God like all I can say is that it was like he was a funnel and he was just funneling uh, like exactly what we were supposed to hear at that point in time so uh, we're sitting here in this exam room just completely flabbergasted we're like here for this eye doctor appointment and we're getting like a prophetic word from the Lord and we're like I literally just start breaking out crying in the waiting or in the exam room and I'm like oh my gosh like I don't know what this means but this is crazy and um, but it was also really encouraging so after that happened um, while I was sitting there actually, I got a, pe a text from Peggy and the text said, hey, Roger's gonna till over that kale in the morning. We need you to come harvest it tonight. And so I was like, okay, all right. Well, I gotta come pick the kale tonight. A well, lot, it just was a side note. And so we finished up our conversation with Kyle. We thanked him for telling us what he felt like was on his heart. And then uh, we told him how we had actually gone to another eye doctor's office that morning and didn't feel like we should be there. And so we called and kept calling and calling and made an appointment at this place. And he proceeded to tell us that they had just finished having a meeting where they were told to not schedule and squeeze in appointments like day of for Collins and how they were supposed to be like speeding along for the like intake uh, first examination. And so even though he was supposed to be in a hurry, he wasn't supposed to carry on conversations with anybody. We ended up in this exam room for another 10 minutes or so. Like all of it was rules being broken, but it was all, I believe, coming together for us to like get encouraged like right before we were about to start something new. So Robbie was seen by the eye doctor. <laughs> the eye doctor just looked at his eye. He apparently had just strained it as he was painting a white wall outside on a Florida sunny day. So like no big deal. He got some eye drops. We left. And um, once we left, like literally his eyes started feeling better like pretty much as we drove away. So we really felt like the only reason we were even there was so that we could get that um, encouragement. And then as I was sitting in the car, um, I texted Peggy back because I remembered that she had texted me and said I had to come harvest the kale. So I um, texted her back and I was like, going to be there tonight. I'm going to come and so don't worry about me. I won't be in your way. I'll come get rid of that kale for you so like it won't go to waste. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. Um, but we are going to figure something out. Thank you guys. Um, Peggy and Roger so much for everything and for letting us even, you know, do anything that we did because that's, you guys really need to appreciate the fact that the pharmacy would not have started had we not stopped off here, had they not been kind enough to let us come and help and um, just do all the things and we'll, we'll get to all the details of the kale Well, we're, story. we're very proud so, of how far you guys have come. Yeah. Aww, thank very you guys proud. so much. Yeah. So it's been a real blessing. And as you can see now, even our little uh, baby gets to come here and have fun and run around with their Absolutely. granddaughter. So it's really awesome. Make me cry. <laughs> so thank you guys. Thank you so much. You guys are the best. Yeah. Awesome. Bye bye. Okay.